And on we go to West Brom and in the most predictable of predictable outcomes. Look, the one thing you can be sure, I suspect the bookies got taken to the cleaners on this one. A 1-0 win, a Spurs clean sheet and Harry Kane scoring the winner um, was not what West Brom fans wanted, but I'm afraid West Brom fans is what happened. And um, West Brom now, well, I think we're starting to starting to worry a little bit, aren't we? Um, we had the same thing at Fulham, trying to find the strategy and find the um, the right formula to be competitive. But West Brom still are not finding it and they're still not winning any games. Uh, and Bilic has changed it again in the um, aftermath of losing that game earlier in the week against Fulham. He's gone back to a back five here. Johnston, or a three at the back, use whatever terminology you're comfortable with. Uh, Johnston, O'Shea, Bartley, Ajay. So O'Shea comes back in there. Um, as a back three. Okay, you're playing against Kane and Son, so, you know, maybe that's sensible. Uh, Furlong and Townsend, the wing backs. However, on the bench um, is uh, Grady Diangana and Matias Pereira is nowhere to be seen. So, the three players I said were key to West Brom staying up, Carl and Grant for scoring the goals and Pereira and Diangana for creating and scoring goals. Only one of them plays in this game. I don't know your thoughts on that. Uh, Gallagher, Livermore and Kravinovic is a midfield three. We had seen that more in the 4-1-4-1 formation. Again, use whatever numbers you're comfortable with that. If you think it's a 4-3-3, fine, whatever. Um, it was those three guys. And it was, at first, Livermore deep with the other two in front. Um, and then it was Kravinovic deep as a playmaker with the other two in front. Um, so we're now looking at more a flat three. But a front Two of Callum Robinson and Carlin Grant. And I mean, in deference to Billich, I did say this. I said, if you were going to use Diane Garner and Pereira in the team and they ended up doing defending, take one of them out. Don't bother and play with a solid defence and just try and get the ball to your dangerous players and move Pereira across into the middle. He's chosen to do that, but with Callum Robinson instead. So he has used a strategy that I was an advocate of, of saying, look, if you can't actually play through defence midfield, through Diangana Pereira to Grant, um, stick the whole thing up and, you know, be pragmatic and but have two players up or have Pereira as a 10 or Diangana as a 10 and at least get them the ball centrally where they can do damage and uh, be solid behind them. So, look, I can see why, uh, whether or not this would be better with, and again, I don't know about Pereira, I don't know why he's... What's happening there? Um, I'm sure there's a sensible explanation that a West Brom fan will let me know in the comments. But you could go with Deanne Garner as a 10. You could go with um, Robinson like he's done. Uh, there you go. Uh, Spurs, um, well, look, star-studded as ever. Loris, Doherty, Alderweireld, Dyer, Regulon, uh, Sissoko and Hjoiberg. And then not only is it Kane and Son, but a seemingly fit Gareth Bale starting with on Dombele in the 10 position. So, yeah, you can see why a defensive mindset might be needed against players of that level. But um, they do have a chance here, West Brom. That's Furlong um, crossing in. Look, we're starting to get the behind-the-back jumps now, uh, given the handball situation. And Carl and Grant, I don't know what happens here. Does he just take his eye off the ball? or um, I, I don't know. Is it just bad technique? You tell me. Um, but misses that header. And um, obviously, we all know the outcome. Uh, when you're playing in a game where Harry Kane's on the pitch and Kyung-Ming Son and Gareth Bale are on the pitch, we know what the outcome's going to be if um, if teams create chances. We know they will take theirs. We just know that. Um, they're that good. Um, not uh, Lo Celso, though, however, who does, um, contradictory to what I was just saying there, miss his chance. But Harry Kane doesn't, 88 minutes in. Um, you're playing three centre-backs here against the best striker in the league, maybe the world um, at the moment. Who knows? You you tell me, you Ronaldo and Messi fans and Lewandowski fans. Definitely the best striker in the league, isn't he? Um, is that too much space? Um, is that a poor defensive shape? Um, you've got the front covered there. I guess that's O'Shea and that's Bartley in the middle. 
So Bartley has let Kane go, essentially. And I know for those people who say, oh, you're being harsh on Bartley. No, I'm not. Two things can be true. Harry Kane can be very good and Bartley could have let him go. That's not harsh. Um, Kane gets in front and glances the header in over the keeper. 1-0 to Spurs, 88 minutes. Mourinho clean sheet, Kane goal. Bosch, what are you going to do? And it's another defeat for West Brom. Look at the numbers over on the left-hand side. Two shots on target to West Brom, five to Spurs with 59% possession to uh, Spurs. Nine corners, so some uh, territory there. But big chances are revealing. Three big chances to Spurs, one to West Brom. So it is a tight game, but again, you're playing against Jose Mourinho, Harry Kane in a tight game. What normally happens in a tight game against those type of characters, they win it. And uh, West Brom are not winning, well, not winning any games. They're not winning tight games or loose games or whatever games because uh, they are eight games in now. Three draws there. Um, those draws coming, uh, if I can remember, in a weird game against Chelsea. Uh, a nil-nil draw against Burnley and a 1-1 draw against Brighton. So those are the ones where Billich will probably look and go, where was my three points um, in any of those games? Maybe the home game against Burnley. But then I remember Burnley hitting the post a couple of times in, in that one. So look, um, tip of the hat to Spurs, who are obviously very good and are second in the league with 17 points from eight games. So they're in the two points per game club up the top there. Um, and for West Brom, look, we'll do the whole analysis of the um, first eight games. We'll do that in a separate video. But I would be worried um, in respects of all of our dearly departed. Villa know their formula now. They know what they're going to do. Leeds know their formula. They know what they're going to do. Fulham seem to have not known their formula and found a formula. So whether it works or not, who knows? That's in the lap of the gods. But I think they know their formula that they're going to go with for the next five, ten games. West Brom don't seem to, do they? That's my that's my worry for West Brom. Is it a back three or a back four? I don't know. And key, what are you doing with Dian Garner and Pereira? Because um, Kravinovic is getting game time. Gallagher is getting game time. Livermore is getting game time. And Grant is getting game time. And you do the math. <laughs> There's not enough positions to play everybody, is there? So... Um, I have some concern for West Brom in the respects of um, whether they're good enough or not is irrelevant until they find the formula. Um, and the big worry is they haven't found the formula yet and stuck to um, a strategy, a pattern or a personnel. So um, that's my worry for, for West Brom going forward. Um, get your thoughts in the comments on that one. It was Spurs, uh, West Brom nil, Spurs one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to see more videos from this channel. Hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload. Ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.